I'm always really happy to report when a weapon is super strong and you know what I won't keep you guys in suspense this is a hella powerful weapon one that you should start farming right now just leave the vid in the background pay attention to what I say and you go start farming. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable, something that we're gonna be treating as a jumping off point in case you're newer to the game. But fear not, we also got the end game set up. And we got galvanized mods, prime mods, a ribbon, we're gonna be taking it to steel path, essentially the works. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly tone. Simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Bubonico. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of the regular free shots. The Bubonico is one of two arm cannons in Warframe, this and the Shadow, that's it, that's all we got. The problem with arm cannons nowadays, well, ever since they were released, there's no special animation or cool stuff, they just kinda sit like this, which makes it, like, trying to match it to your fashion or anything, extremely difficult. But let's get down to the nitty gritty. The accuracy for a shotgun, well, it's actually quite good. And the fire rate is solid, this is automatic my friends, but it is a projectile based attack, so leading your targets um, sometimes is a thing. If you mod it right, leading your targets should not be an issue. Secondary fire mode is where the Bubonico kinda gets even more special. You're gonna be chucking yourself free grenades in rapid succession. One, dos and tres. Beautiful, and each of those grenades will be consuming free ammo, right? So your total magazine, 27, chucking those free grenades will knock you down to 18. But as you can see, the ammunition recharges by itself. So you don't, you're don't, you not gonna need any ammo pads, you're not gonna need carrier or anything of the sort. The ammunition recharges by itself at a rate of about 17 per second, so it is actually on the quick side. Now let's hop into stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity 60 out of 60, and if your comes with a measly 30 out of 30, you jump into actions and you install the Auto King Catalyst. Rest assured, this is one of the most powerful primary weapons in the game. You wanna catalyst this one. Or potato, the veterans call it potatoing it. Was it tomatoing it? No, the tomato was the excellent slot for the uh, warfare. Never mind, a side topic there. My weapon has been formatted a total of 8 times. <sighs> You're not gonna need to format eight times for the weapon build I'm recommending you. You can get away with something like four to five depending on the mods that you have at your disposal. You should definitely unlock this slot right here, my friends. This is the excellent slot because into this one, galvanized acceleration. 30% projectile uh, speed and on kill. Another 30% stacks up two times. It's beautifully, it's beautifully. Accuracy, if this one is 25, it's a shotgun, we don't really care all that much, it's fine. Keep in mind that the projectiles on the secondary fire mode, the lobbing of the grenades and all whatnot, do have a dropping arc to them. So, you know, you throw a grenade like you throw a grenade in any other game, for the most part. And they do stagger you, so do bear that one in mind, because the range on those explosions is 7 meters. You're gonna get a little bit staggered, unless, of course, you have some way around it. One way around it is to basically play a Warframe that is immune to such things, for example... Revenant, which is my favorite. Where were we? Oh yeah, fall off. Between 19 and 41 meters unmodded, my friends, but when you add in projectile flight speed, it just goes off the charts. And keep in mind, this is not stacked right now. What you're seeing right now in the stat screen, 24 to 53, that is just that 30%, but you're gonna be getting a whole lot more than that. So again, galvanized acceleration is best in slot. Fire rate of 3.83 by default, magazine of 27, multi shot of 7, 7 pellets by default. Keep that one in mind when you see a low status chance because people go like, oh no, the status chance is horrible on this, that means it's terrible. No, it's per projectile and you are firing by default with no multi shot 7. Now it's alarming, punch roll of 2 meters. Okay, fine, 1.9, it couldn't be 2, it's 1.9. Dude, that is more than enough. You don't need to build multi-shot on this one. Now, you can if you want to, and you're going to be able to shoot through walls and even throw grenades through walls, and that can be fun, but it's not really needed. Reload of 0 0.5. This is a little bit misleading. This is simply the delay it takes for the weapon to start that ammo regeneration effect. Yes? Keep in mind, the ammo regeneration is about 18 per second. More than enough, more than enough. Riven Dispo, 2 out of 5. I hate this bloody disposition. You know why? That means it's still worth getting Rivens. This is the worst disposition you can have. Yes, they are still worth it. Yes, people charge a whole lot of money for it because they know this is one of the best weapons in the game. Especially if you get a good one. Now, what worry? Oh, yeah. 
The damage per projectile, 25% critical chance for the 2.3x critical multiplier. This represents the primary fire mode, which is decent, not bad at all, and the status chance we already talked about. Now, the damage spray out, you got the full IPS plus toxin, which is both a blessing and a curse when it comes to elemental combinations. Most importantly here, slash is highest, and it's gonna have proc priority number one by default. Total damage is actually quite significant on modded. Now, this burst shot is the secondary fire mode. Yes, you get the accuracy, fantastic fire rate. See that? 3.37 opposed to 3.83. These little things, these small little changes from here to there. Again, the same reload, the same Riven Dispo. Duh! Now, when you see the damage on the secondary fire mode, keep in mind that that impact that you see, that nine little impact, that is the projectile making contact with a target. In our case, the little grenades. Yes, that doesn't represent the damage of the explosion. The damage of the explosion is way down here, my friends, and it's viral damage. Viral damage by default. I mean, honestly, could they make it even easier than this for us? Essentially, you go in, you prime them with your secondary fire mode, and you finish them off with your primary fire mode. That is pretty obvious. Critical chance is not a 3%, but a 3.5x critical multiplier. Beautiful if you're going to be playing into Harrow, Kavad buff, and of course, Arcane Avenger. Fall off is going to be 50%. You know what? You might say, dude, that's a lot. But if you take a look at explosive weapons in Warframe in general, that fall off is actually quite nice. And with that out of the way, let's have a wait. Did I talk about arcanes? I didn't talk about arcanes. Well, arcanes are pretty simple. If you're going to be using this weapon for what it's meant to be used, yes, damage over time, viral slash, you see where this is going. Yes, you're going to be using it with primary merciless. If you want to make a build, a raw damage build, and you just want to go for raw power, you can go with deadhead. And if you want to use it in tandem with your melee, go with dexterity. The obvious route is going to be merciless. Now, about that standard build. Damage with point blank, multi shot with health chamber, critical chance and critical damage for the use of critical deceleration, 200% critical chance and 20% fire rate sacrificed, ravage, but we also got shotgun spats to make up for that loss in fire rate. Keep in mind that this weapon, when you have a little bit of fire rate on, it just feels so much stronger, so much better, so much smoother to actually play with. And you know what, when it comes to weapons in Warframe, this is a normal trend. It doesn't really matter if the weapon is hella powerful, if it's awkward to use, if it has usability issues, ammo issues, if it takes too long to reload, players will naturally try something else. They simply won't use that weapon. So it's important to tackle the usability issues as well. This being a bit of on the subjective side though. So do bear that one in mind. You got a Mumu? Everybody knows, yes? If you viral, you Mumu, and we viral with a single mod, we're just gonna be using the cold mod. We're gonna be making viral on the primary fire mode, and we already have it on the secondary fire mode. Now we got viral cold. So, you see my predicament now? If I wanted to make something like viral heat, that would be difficult, because you already have on the primary fire mode that toxin. So, that makes things a little bit Complicatio. And you know what? I don't have that many slots to sacrifice when it comes to the build. And of course, Fatal Acceleration in the Exodus slot. Vigilante Armaments. Much lot like Shotgun Spaz here. These are option mods for the most part. You can swap these out with whatever you feel like. For example, let's say you're the God of Punch. You want more Punch for... for I don't know why you want more, but there you go. You can have more punch through or whatever else. This is just the baseline I'm recommending. And you're going to be loving yourself the performance on this one. Nothing up my Nidus' sleeve, nothing in the, what's it called, the uh, Void Schools and all whatnot that would make the weapon seem a whole lot more powerful. Keep in mind that you can make any po any weapon look strong if you throw enough Warframe buffs and synergies at it. Now, normally I would say this is how you play with a weapon. You play with the secondary fire rate. Like so, oh, that is so good. It feels so good. You bombard your target, look at all those viral procs, then you come in with the primary fire and you absolutely annihilate whatever stands before you. But the truth is, you don't really need to pepper your targets with the secondary fire rate at all. Now I'm just gonna destroy these targets really quick, like so, beautiful, <laughs> a million slashes into that guy. I don't know how many shells I unloaded, but it was already up on 20 slash. The honest answer is that you don't even need the secondary fire mode. Look, I'm just gonna go to the side so I can use the punch rule. See my point? Absolutely bloody insane that 1.9 meters worth of punch. Hey, look at me. I'm not going for headshots and this is a critical weapon What's that? You don't know why it's important to go for a headshot on a critical weapon? Papa's got your back. 
Link in the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on critical chance, critical multiplier, hidden multipliers, zone multipliers, all of that multipliers. Yeah, there's a lot of multipliers in Warframe. And of course, the game never tells you jack about it, but I got you back. Don't worry about it. Watch that guide. Now, where was I? Yes, it's the first time I'm shooting the same targets. My friends, this is an extremely powerful setup for nothing but normal mods. Normal, average, everyday mods. The only issue I take with the Bubonico, subjective as it may be, it's Viral Slash again! It's Viral Slash again! There's a million weapons that can do Viral Slash. Okay, fine, I'm obviously exaggerating. But dear D, I know you're listening in from time to time. I think it's time you guys shook it up and changed the meta. It's time for another elemental rework. Or something, please, that's enough. In any case, this is the base build I'm recommending for you guys. Now, let's say... You are not a newish player. This is more of a casual player setup. Yeah, something like a jumping off point. But you don't need that, right? You got your prime mods, you got your galvanized mods, you got ribbons, you got everything you need. Of course, we're gonna be using galvanized hell instead of the normal version. We're gonna be using galvanized savvy. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What are you saying? Does galvanized savvy work on an explosive weapon? Yes and no. Okay, it works in one, two, two of the three possible damage instances that this weapon can create. It works on the primary fire just fine. It works on the secondary fire where the projectile makes contact with a target, like for example when the grenade physically gives a mwah kiss to your enemy, but it does not apply its damage benefit to the explosion, yes? Needless to say, since you're killing stuff with your primary fire mode, it's 100% worth in going with Galvanized Savvy, which, you're, which is why you're not seeing flat damage anymore. On my build, you also see... You also see this, yes, yes, it's disgusting, it's gross, I know you guys don't like it, simply go for flat damage instead of a faction mod, if you so decide. It's fine, trust me, it's fine, up until level... It won't even make a difference up until level 5 to 600, trust me, alright? So go for flat damage instead. Munitions, prime ravage instead of the normal version. Oh, and the ribbon! Of course, it's a loaner from a friend. I don't actually have good ribbons. I have only garbage. Multi-shot, critical damage, minus puncture, and fire rate, making more room for slash. Uh, minus puncture, again, making more room for slash. Lower IPS value, you get how that one works, or you should by this point. Once upon a time, we had the 4x IPS rules. Impact puncture slash had a four times greater chance of proccing its element over elementals, but nowadays they removed that to make things a bit more simpler and galvanize acceleration together with primary merciless. I'm gonna be shooting the same targets as before, even though it's hardly fair, but fine. Now, this being a galvanized setup, you know what that means, right? In order for me to show you the actual power of the weapon, I'm gonna need a couple of kills. The problem is, wow, well, yeah. The problem is, as soon as I drop a single stack, I'm gonna get bugged, yeah? And that's the stack. Right now, we are still bugged on stack decay buffs. If you don't know what that's all about, what the hell are you even talking about? Well, not we're not getting the full power to our weapons because of this bug. If you wanna know more details so I don't take up another three to four minutes in this vid, link the cards right now. It's been around for a couple of weeks, I think, and they still haven't fixed it, which is a little bit disappointing. Come on, D, these are the most powerful buffs in the game. Let's get to it pretty please with sugar lumps on top. Needless to say, the weapon breaks house, I mean. It just destroys, and I'm not getting full galvanized power at the moment. But I know what you're gonna say, dude. <sighs> these guys are sitting still in the simulacrum. Sure, the weapon doesn't perform as well when it comes to normal conditions. Let's say some steel path against the corrupted. Well, I'm glad you asked, but first this guy dies. And now, off to the path of the steel. Come out, come out, wherever you is, corrupted heavy goon level 130, and there it goes. I didn't even have the stacks and all whatnot, not that it matters at this point. So, welcome to the void, these are the corrupted, and they are getting absolutely melted before the power of the booba. And the knee, and the... I'm sorry, my humor is really bad, I, I apologize. It's the only one I got. As you can see, there are two corrupted heavy goons over here, absolutely annihilated. In actual gameplay, you're not gonna stop to see the procs, right? But if you do wanna stop to see the procs, well, they're absolutely huge. That's a single shot in that guy, and completely annihilated. I don't think there's a lot I can show you in Steel Path to prove the worth of this weapon. It's absolutely insane, it's sick as all hell, and you guys simply gotta get it. It's as simple as that. The Bubonico is, without a doubt, one of the most powerful primary weapons in the game. And that's pretty much the long and short of it. But that doesn't mean we can get better performance than this, however. Oh, but before, kill this guy. Bye-bye. And this guy. 
you got yourself a couple of options. You can go for something like Hero. If you go with Hero, you're gonna be able to get 50% critical chance bonus additive after on body shots, fully stacked Convenant, and 200% on headshots. And that's gonna work fantastically well for the secondary fire mode of the Bubonico. Remember that huge base critical multiplier? Right now, fully modded, with the Riven, it goes to 9.56. 9.6 critical multiplier, so that definitely works. But honestly, it's not really all that efficient. Of course, when it comes to Warframe buffs, when it comes to weapon buffs, when it comes to raw destructive power, there is really nobody better than Lady Mirage Prime. You can go across the projection if you want to, it's not mandatory. Simply go for the aura of your choosing. Arcanes though, these are a lot more impactful. Now we're gonna leave one open because normally this is the arcane you will be using for your Warframe build. Let's say your Energize or whatever else your build calls for. In the second one and what I would be mandatory for the Bubonico is you slap it with a little bit of Avenger. 45% bonus critical chance, additive after stacking on top of what you already have, applying to primary, secondary and to your melee at the exact same time. Go for this one, you don't really need the second one at all. Companion buffs. Here, where's my gin? Where's my, okay, anyway, here is supposed to be a gin or whatever else, oh, hello, whatever else sentinel you want to. That's not important. What is important, make sure that on that sentinel's weapon, you have the four vigilante mods. Now you can skip some of these if you're already using them on your build, like for example, armaments in the introductory build. Yeah, you don't need to equip it here because you won't get its bonus. 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons, fantastic. Even if the sentinel dies and never comes back to life. Yes, you still retain that bonus. We're gonna be spawning the highest level I can. D, please let me spawn levels in the thousand in the simulacrum. That would be fantastic. Now, Empower for Mirage and her free ability Eclipse, absolutely sky high, 840%. And one more time for the best animation in Warframe. Damn, that's good. Let's taste secondary fire mode for the kicks and lols. Wow, it's actually killing with the secondary fire mode. How's that? How's that, my friends? Did you guys see that I managed to get orange crits with the secondary fire mode? That is thanks to the vigilante buff. That's why it's so, or can be, better said, so important. You can kill AoE style when it comes to up until level, let's say 200, 220, 250-ish normal. Yes, but if you're going higher than that, you should apply your primary fire mode instead because by all intents and purposes, it is a whole lot more powerful. Allow me to demonstrate you my favorite magic trick of now you see him, now you don't. Is there any point for me to say that I recommend the Bubonico? Did, did you not get that from like the start to the end of the vid? This is an insane weapon. Go play the Bubonico. It's a shotgun that plays like, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I can't use that in the title. I think it would be a copyright issue or something. You need to play with this gun. It's one of the most powerful. It's absolutely fantastic. It's reliable. It gets the job done. And it definitely gets 100% my seal of approval. As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, to share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And let me know in the comment section down below. What would you like to see next? You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's a link in the cards right now. But until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.